All of the problems I work through in my videos can be downloaded from accountingworkbook.com. If you'd like a copy for yourself, just click the PDF link and you can download a copy to your computer. Also found on the website are links to all of my accounting videos, not just the ones here on YouTube that are publicly listed. They're also members only videos. About 40% of my videos are free and open. The other 60% are for members. If you click one of the members links, it'll take you to a page that looks like this, says members only content. If you'd like access to that content, just hit the join button. Okay, let's jump into the problem. Let's take a look at problem 111A. This is about ROI and residual income. These are what I would call summary measures of performance. You want to know how your company's doing in one number? ROI is a very common one. And it just says, okay, we had this much operating profit. We have this many assets. Divide one by the other, get a percentage. And it says, this is how effectively your manager is using the assets under their control. And it's a way of judging a manager, right? We want to measure performance of either a company or of a division of a company, a part of a company. And we're saying, how well are they doing? Basically, you divide the profit by the number of assets that that manager had available to them. And that's how effectively they're using their assets. And that's a measure of managerial effectiveness. So these summary measures are, are pretty useful. Now, this problem illustrates a problem with some of the summary measures, and let's get into it. Uh, so we'll compute ROI first. The formula for ROI, again, is operating income, whoa, messy, income divided by average operating assets. And that was ROI. We'll in a few moments, compute residual income. That is operating income minus, now in brackets, required rate of return, RRR, times uh, average operating assets and I'm running out of real estate over there in the corner of my screen. So it's required rate of return times average operating assets. Let me write that a little neater for you. Average op assets. Well, I would say that was 2% neater, really worth everybody's time. Sorry about that. Let's continue. Um, so let's start with our, well, let's start by reading the question. The first thing we'll do is ROI for this one. The CEO of Grace Company, Nicole Grace, is debating an investment. So she's contemplating whether she wants to pursue some line of business, this is an investment like buying Apple stock. This is like, I'm thinking of, you know, opening a new shop or opening a new business line here. The investment is projected to earn $20,000 per year and will require the company to acquire $100,000 in assets operating assets so it's going to tie up a hundred thousand dollars in assets the following chart summarizes grace's decision so before the investment she's expecting to make seventy five thousand dollars in operating income using three hundred thousand dollars in operating assets after the investment ninety five thousand dollars because of course twenty thousand dollars annually that's what this says and the total assets under her control will be 400 in other words it's an increase of 100K, that was an increase of 20K to get to uh, 95. So there we have it. Now it says, assume Grace is evaluated based on growth in ROI, which would not be unusual. You wanna see your managers have ROI that's big and getting bigger, right? You want to be making more money and an ROI is a measure of how efficiently Grace is using her assets. Uh, so let's measure ROI before and after. So we're gonna go ROI before and ROI after. And again, the after is everything goes according to plan. She makes the 20,000 on the $100,000 investment in assets. So ROI before operating income divided by average operating assets, 75,000 divided by 300,000 ROI after. 95,000 divided by 400,000. Okay, 75 divided by 300 gives us 0 0.25. 
25% is her ROI. If she takes this opportunity, 95 divided by 400, 23 point, 0 0.2375 or 23.75%. Okay. Now we're Grace and we're, uh, um, what's the word? <laughs> Judged. <laughs> we're reviewed based on ROI growing. So in this case, ROI goes from 25% to 23%. Should we do it? Probably not. Now, this is where I was mentioning these single measures can mess people up because I think the company would like to make more money. And if you have an ROI goal and you're tunnel visioned on that ROI goal, it will cause you to turn down things that would make your company more profitable. And so these summary measures are great because they measure things quickly. It does give you a good idea of how efficiently this person is using the company's assets. However, I think it you know, a disadvantage here is we turn down profitable work potentially. Residual income tries to get around this. It says, okay, we're not that interested in just maximizing ROI. We want to make profitable decisions. We want to maximize how many profitable decisions we have. So the formula for residual income is operating income minus I said RRR, required rate of return. What a required rate of return is, is the company has a limited amount of money. They can invest in various, you know, opportunities and min limited amount of assets to invest in those opportunities. And they'll say, listen, if this opportunity, let's say it's profitable, it is only going to make us 2%. Well, I can make 2% in like a high interest savings account. Uh, five and, and you know you invest in some new line of business it's risky <laughs> you got to overcome the risk you got to overcome the fact that i can you know buy an index fund in the stock market and probably get eight percent on average so you're gonna have to do something to, to make a company wish to invest and so this company's required rate of return is 15 percent. so you're saying we're not going to invest in it unless we think it can return us 15 percent annually so here's how it works residual income maybe i should read the question b it says assume grace is evaluated based on growth in the company's residual income the company's required rate of return is 15 percent compute the residual income before and after so residual income before is going to be uh, again operating income which was seventy five thousand dollars minus and then there's that little formula, required rate of return times average operating assets. So 15% times our average operating assets, which were before were 300,000. So that's 75,000 minus, let's get our calculator here, 0.15 times 300, 45,000. And so our residual income before was $30,000. Now that's a number. It's not a percentage. We just want that number to be bigger. Every year we're just hoping, do I have more residual income, like more leftover income? That's what we're looking for. That's it. Higher residual income is better. There's no, uh, no need to worry about it like ROI, where it's a percentage that can go up and down. We just want a bigger number here. Let's compute our residual income after so our residual income after is going to be uh, 95,000 minus and I'm going to do this in my calculator it's the 15% times the new operating assets 15% times 400,000 0.15 times 40000 60,000 that is our calculation and again that was 400,000 times 15 percent or RRR so 95 minus 60 is 35,000 this produced a higher residual income so we would say Nicole Grace you should do it we recommend you make this investment it gives you higher residual income and presumably a bigger bonus or if this is your own company you're making more money it's worthwhile the final question says, give at least one advantage or disadvantage of using measures like ROI or residual income. Now, these are single measures meant to summarize complicated situations. The obvious advantage to using something like ROI is it's simple. It's one calculation and it does 
actually capture a lot of what's going on in a company captures how effectively the uh manager or the person running the company is using company assets uh so that's the advantage it's simple and straightforward easy to explain easy to understand easy to calculate the big disadvantage here is it doesn't always get it right it doesn't always capture everything in this case we would have wanted uh grace to invest even though it hurt her roi so sometimes these simple measures don't always capture anything they can be gamed right you can sort of say okay the denominator here is average assets well and, and generally average net assets after depreciation so if i don't replace my old assets with new assets the ROI gets bigger every year because my asset number goes down every year because of depreciation. So it can be gamed and people do game simple measures. So again, the advantage is it's simple. The disadvantage sometimes results in bad decisions and sometimes can be gamed. Okay, that's it for 111A. I do hope that this video has been useful to you and I hope it's been useful enough that you'll consider hitting one of those buttons for me. Have a great day. Bye for now.